Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. We begin with the responsive verses on page 8 in the chapel booklet. O Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. We sing him 413, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. This morning we return to a portion of the gospel reading from Mark 11. We read verses 7 through 10. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. What a day. Jesus could have established his kingdom right then and there, and hundreds, perhaps thousands, would have flocked to his side to proclaim him as their king. But that was not God's plan. His kingdom was to be an eternal kingdom, not a temporary one. His kingdom was to be a heavenly kingdom, not an earthly one. So when people began to realize that Jesus wasn't going to put on the kind of crown that would be customer, cu customary for a secular ruler, they began to turn away from him, even to turn against him. The shouts of Hosanna 
soon were changed to a different shout, crucify him. Things were good on Palm Sunday, but then on Monday, Jesus made some enemies by driving animals out of the temple, by turning over the tables of the money changers, by saying that the priests had turned the temple into a den of thieves. By Thursday, his death warrant had been issued, and he was arrested by the temple police. On Friday morning, he was forced to carry his cross to a hill called the Place of the Skull, where he was crucified between two common criminals. But that was the whole point. Jesus rode into Jerusalem so that he could go to that cross to pay for your sin, to pay for my sin. The sinless Son of God died for the sins of the whole world. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Those words point to Jesus as king, which is in keeping with another acclamation shouted on that day, which is recorded in the Apostle John's account of the triumphal entry. Blessed is the king of Israel. All of the church year is connected, as is all of scripture. So let's note the connection between Christmas and Holy Week that we see in Isaiah 9. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The Lord had promised David long ago that he would have a descendant on his throne who would rule an everlasting kingdom. David's earthly kingdom had long since crumbled away. Although many people at the time of Christ were hoping for political liberation, were longing for a, a kind of a political Messiah who would restore the kind of earthly kingdom that David also ruled over, the faithful in Israel understood that someday a son of David would come to establish an everlasting kingdom, the kingdom of God. He would rule as great David's greater son. The faithful could now see the dawn of that new kingdom with the arrival of Jesus at the gates of Jerusalem. The kingdom of God is essentially God's ruling activity, and we often speak of it from three perspectives, power, grace, and glory. The kingdom of grace is God ruling in the hearts of his people through faith. That's really what is the foundation of what Paul writes to the Ephesians when he says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. That grace is amazing. Being made alive in Christ is not a matter of performance. You cannot make yourself holy. You cannot save yourself no matter how hard you try. Forgiveness, being made right with God, the promise of heaven, salvation, that all is a package that only comes to us as a gift that God gives to us and puts into our empty hands. And he has put that into your hands. Does that sound too good to be true? Not in this case, because we serve an outrageously gracious God who just loves to give undeserved blessings to people like you and me. That's his character, his nature. God's son paid for your sin. 
God's Son made that gift possible. God's Son made that gift available to everyone. It's not a matter of performance. So if you're on that ladder constantly trying to get higher and higher and higher, throw the ladder to the ground. The ladder will never reach high enough. It's because of Christ's death and his payment for our sins that we receive God's favor and have a home in heaven through grace. Grace removes that frustration of a performance mentality of setting the ladder up and climbing and falling off and setting it up again and trying harder and still falling off. Grace sets us free. What an amazing, astounding grace that we were loved with, that, that undeserved, unending love of God that has made an eternal difference in our lives. God has pardoned you. He has washed you clean in the blood of the Lamb. He has made you his own. He reminds you of that in quiet, powerful ways, in the water of your baptism, in his word of forgiveness, in his supper. My maternal grandmother, Grandma Moss, her favorite hymn is the Rock of Ages. It puts it like this, that hymn, Not the labor of my hands can fulfill the law's demands. So take a good look at your king as he rides into Jerusalem. And then take another look at yourself to see a holy, dearly loved child of God who can say along with the hymn writer, Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Our king is coming. Let's go meet him. We continue with the Te Deum on page 8.
Today in our prayers, we remember our sister in Christ, Karen Kroll, wife of One Africa team missionary, Dan Kroll. Dan is the brother of MLC staff member, Connie Paustian. So Karen is the sister-in-law of Mrs. Paustian and Professor Paustian. Karen has been diagnosed with cancer and is receiving medical treatment in South Africa. We pray. O oh God, our ever-present help in trouble, we implore your mercy on behalf of your child, Karen Kroll. Let the light and warmth of your grace shine on her, her husband Dan, and all their family. Drive the shadows of doubt and fear from their hearts through the sure knowledge that they are your forgiven children and that you care for them as their heavenly Father. According to your gracious will, bless the work of those who care for Karen and grant her a full recovery from illness and a return to health. Abide with the Krolls and all of us as we journey through this world of sin and sorrow until by your grace we enter the joy and glory of heaven. Gracious Father, your son came to us humbly on a donkey's back, and now he sits exalted at your right hand. As we journey with him through Holy Week, Help us always to hear his word, follow his teachings, and live in his spirit. Prepare our hearts for that day when every knee shall bow and every tongue acknowledge that he is Lord and King to your eternal glory. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.